and he is an editor for the Sri Lanka Nira. And he was killed on the January 11th. On that weekend, he wrote his editorial, last editorial came, and under the title, and then they came for me. After he died, he came and he said, government is responsible for that. It happened in the capital city, and broad plane like still nobody, I mean, no actions were taken. So international opinion is changing, because there's a UN panel report, State Department reports, USP is giving us, Channel 4 videos, as you saw, and as then channels are voting for Tamil parties, then they're getting the message clear. So, UN Human Rights Resolutions on Sri Lanka. In 2009, they wanted to do an independent resolutions. So, it took the, some countries brought this one and congratulate, but instead of that, that didn't pass. It, instead of that, they congratulate. But all this report came out, and UN Secretary appointed a panel. And then found the report found incredible, I mean, incredible evidence of human rights violation and recommended further inquiry. And in, once they know that something is coming up against, they formed a committee. Delayed for a long time. So the various human rights groups, including Human Amnesty International, criticized the NRC committee. But even that had uh, they come up with a resolution. So they were whatever committee they came up with. They didn't even uh, implement whatever the recommendation in that our sweet committee came up. Then US has to sponsor a resolution. It's passed in March 2012 and 2013 to follow the NSRC recommendations. And at that time, Tamils felt this resolution itself, Tamils in the North felt, oh, oh, that's a victory for them. In the Indian paper, he mentioned a half page paper victory under the title. They collected half page in that one. People are so desperate to get consider that as a victory. So recently, last week actually, UNHRC, United Nations Human Rights Council High Commission, Gabby Pillay went there. She spent about seven days there. She that's the longest visit she has been in any place. And see when she was there, the people are here even after four years, they are looking for their beloved ones who are still missing. You can see some of the ones people were, some of the people who wanted to see. So basically what she said, you can go and check it in the UN websites, but whatever I told earlier, the, Syria, the military rule and other stuff she mentioned. Part of it is Sri Lanka is fast becoming an authoritarian state. She said that one. And it goes, she made that one last week. There's a uh, in September, in September, yeah. They started the uh, uh, UNHRC committee, committee meetings. All the countries were in Geneva. They had a meet. In that one, she gave a preliminary report. In that report, she said Sri Lanka is fast becoming operation state. And that happened. And then she's going to uh, give a detailed report in 2000, uh, in the end of this month. So then he said, I have never experienced. So many people weeping and crying. She had, she had seen so many people. I have never seen this level, level of uncontrollable grief. And one other thing is, when she was there, the people whoever she met were threatened by the military. That is the biggest issue. And she has said, I have received reports that people in villages and settlements in Mulatu area, where that's the area where the all this happened, were visited by police and military officers, both before and after I arrived here. How much they are scaring the people. They don't want people to go and tell these things. And so what Sri Lanka government is doing, he, they know the international problems. So what they are trying to do is they have trying to convince the federal representatives that what they are doing is the right. So they have access to everyone. For us, we can access only through you guys. You have to come up because they have a lobbying and they spend about $116,500 using two forms and lobbying and then passing their message. I can find that one. It was in a paper. I can tell you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
I knew at that time, but this, I saw it in a Sri Lanka newspaper. So what we can do, what we can do to stop the human rights violations, it is working. International pressure on Sri Lanka, and it is working. So it was solved by the means because of the international pre uh, pressure. The concentration camps were removed. An election is going to happen in North, which I mentioned. In a couple of weeks, they are going to have an election. That also, there's a lot of militaries trying to influence the elections. I hope they will not. And they are talking about investigation and political search. That is not enough. That's still a long way to go. Some of them, they are trying to win president and say, Oh, I have a plan. I'm going to give might not be some rights. Then next day he will tell something else. But at least they have in a situation they have to talk about it. That constant pressure. This is government of Government of So we have to support like groups like Amnesty International, human rights groups, and USD banks, I'll come to that, and other groups who are very active. So we have combined our effort. Amnesty International, she has mentioned earlier, uh, Jim McDonald's is an expert on Sri Lanka. He's living in Chicago. And they are going to show us no files on on September 24th. I will encourage all of you to attend that one and support him. So they have current projects, war crime investigations, arbitrary detention of uh, under the PTA, that's the prevention of terrorism act. Repeal that. And then uh, this is a big uh, journal, spread the eligible. Uh, Again in Kalbara, I don't know. Again in Kalbara. And he was missing because he criticized the president. He is from the Sinhalese group. And actually, last year in the NIU, Jim McDonald came there and gave a presentation about that in a human rights. And then 78 workers were killed. 78 workers killed. They are for the international, working for international, inter, international aid or Seventeen people were killed, and so they were looking for international agents. And the three point five—that's the biggest one. They are running right now. So these five students were killed in front of the Gandhi statue. You know, Gandhi is the most started this non-violent movement, always against the violence. In front of his statue, they killed five students. And I mean, I think like any of our children can be. They, they were well educated, still in front of him. You can go and see Amnesty International is telling this. It's a big project for them. You guys have to support them. And what other section we can do? Bring the awareness to the public, general public, or have huge community stuff we can do. Protect our st state representatives. Currently, there's a draft resolution in, uh, by Amnesty. If you guys, we need to find a sponsor in the Senate and the Congress. And we can, I mean, that is in the state. We are trying to do, if you can help in any way, find some human rights people working there, and that will be a great help. Contact the federal representative. United, USD, back that United States, Tamil Action Political Council is there. There's a several, they have, because of their action, several resolution passed in the state, the Senate, and Congress in the US. Several speeches were made about different traditions of Tamils in May 2012 and May 2013. Letters were signed by many people, sent to Secretary of State, appropriating money. When they appropriate money, they send several wording on Sri Lanka restriction. State Department, the one is going to make all the decisions. But when we contact State Department, they say we need pressure from the Congress. So that's what the public can do. Congress or Senate, if you contact, they can put the pressure on the State Department and something will happen. And in Illinois, in the last group, we have five congressmen support. But unfortunately, unfortunately, three of them are not more uh, congressmen. Even in last, these three, Jan Sosky, she's a human rights supporter. She was, I mean, I, I we went there and talked to Judy Bigger, Don Mitchell, beyond the Democrat or Republican, they supported us. Now it's changed. And now we have congressmen. We have and Dibinsky and Will Foster is in our area, so I have, we have communication. Independently, he told me after talking to him, I didn't ask, he said, you guys need an independent international investigation. 
we are we need to contact adam finsinga i think he is your con- congressman he is is in a far from coming foreign affairs coming they may call this suspicious so you guys can help us to get contact with them and do that and drag china is another foreign service from them and any other congress we we have resolutions there and senate wise the government and mark Kerr, they are in a big committee for appropriation and especially Durbin is in the foreign relations and human rights and constitution regrets are very powerful we can see because one time sri lanka came up some third congressman they, they didn't know about it they the sri lanka came with a letter and this is against the tamil but a few statements they made was not true that time i looked at the people in this list and found one person in india you know, he's not I live living with constituent and I and I said so he said we contacted him he signed his he signed that letter then the foreign idea I eventually contacted him I didn't have any idea so his office is listening now he said okay they didn't, he didn't have any idea somebody signed it. and now the they said they want to contact the congressional group and people and then eventually they were in the good condition so he is listening to us but then one thing he asked how many constituents are interested in this i only come up with only one name is the bob in so city there i didn't have any other names that's why it's our problem we need so currently there are two right resolutions there one is a in congress so we can that's a reason to contact the congress and it's a mind resolution but there's eight constituents you can ask your congressman to support them And there's a new caucus is coming up, Congressional Caucus on Religious and Ethnic Freedom in Sri Lanka. Coming up, leading by Bill Johnson, a Republican, and a Dan Davis, a Democrat. We need more members. We can bring the other members to the representation, ask them to join this one, and we, we can help you in your documents, join them, in anything. And at last, this tragedy should not happen anymore. Please join us to see one guys in the Sri Lanka, I have a mailing list if you have a, if you join our high PHRP mailing list I have a notebook here if you like give your email address we will put you in the mailing list and then we can update you and in the face you pretty much I use for this purpose you can check it as a standard standard mark and this is my email address and please join have a human rights at you go and I need your support we all need this thank you circulating four petition where are they now okay so please sign and this is voluntary if you want to give a uh, a voluntary contribution and we'll give this directly this imagine this is a hat we are passing you the hat put the money and we'll give this to stand up for to support uh, the cause if you want to else pass on the imaginary hat Uh, what group do you want? Do you have a legal identity? No, not legal. No legal identity. <laughs> uh, can I get your name? My yeah. name, but I can give you, give you address and everything. When I give it to certain people, I can send it to you. But this one will go to the healthy oh. people. Oh. But please give your address and I will thank you now. Many, many